following interview was conducted with Alika Ahastein Bryant, director of the Native American Educational Cultural Center for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, September 2nd, 2010 at the Center on the West Lafayette campus. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Library. Good afternoon, Palika, and thank you very much. Let's thank start you. off, uh, tell us where and when you were born and mm -hmm. your parents and early years. Okay, good. Um, my, again, my name is Felica Ahastin Bryant, and I am originally from New Mexico. It's a, from a small town on the Navajo Reservation, about 24 miles north of Gallup. And um, it is, um, it is, Located well, I think 24 miles north of Gallup, but that's kind of where my uh, it, it's on the reservation. But then again, border town. I grew up. I was born in Gallup, which is uh, not too far from. It's considered one of the border towns. So therefore, I didn't grow up. Grow up. I didn't. I wasn't born on the reservation, but I grew up on the reservation. Okay. And um, my parents. I have um, two of my parents. Both of my parents were were lived with us, and I have one sibling who um, is my sister. But being from the Navajo tribe, um, our tribe is matrilineal. So therefore, everything is based on our mother's side. Every, um, whenever I introduce myself with my traditional way, I'll always have to say my mother's clan first, and then I say my father's mother's clan second. So those are my two primary clans. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result, all my mother's nieces and nephews are considered my brothers and sisters. All my dad's nieces and nephews are considered my cousins. So I only have one sister, but really sometimes I'll say I have four sisters and two brothers. So, you know, kind of just to get people a little bit more confused. And um, I, I grew up on the reservation, went to school in the reservation school. Can you tell us a little about school? Mm -hmm. you know, grade school and high school too? As grade, well? Yeah, grade school, high school. Okay. And it was... Um, it was a very unique experience because I didn't, um, I was the majority in the school. You know, I, I, coming from Native American, we very rarely had anybody, non-Natives that were living in the area. We, if we did, they were either people that were there from the churches or people um, who were teachers. So it Teaching was in the school. Teaching in the school system. Okay. And so um, being that we had a, it, it, was, it was such a rural area. We have one gas station, one trading post, and um, a number of churches in the area. So where I, where I went to school, that was the primary area where all the, the schools, we had elementary, middle, and high school. So all three of those schools were there. And some of the students had to be bused in from area locations. So sometimes they could have ridden the bus for like 20 minutes just to get, get, to, get to the school. So it really was the closest, closest area. Um, with my with my family, we are a close knit family, and um, my aunts live nearby. So you know, at times, my both my parents worked, and so therefore, um, after school, I didn't have I was by myself, or else I was with my sister, or mo most of the times I would spend with my aunts, and we would just take the bus to her house, walk to her house. It just depends. I have two or three aunts, so I would just and again, they're considered my mothers as well. So therefore, we would stay there until my uh, my parents got out of Let me ask you a question: Were the teachers in the schools were they uh, from the reservation, or were there teachers from the outside? Did you have the majority of them were outside. Okay. They came okay. from all different parts of the country. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. There was a lot of students from the Teach America program. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Uh, where the, what? Uh, uh, so you went through eight grades and then uh, high school also on the mm -hmm. reservation. Correct. Tell us a little about that too. In high school. Um, high school. It, it was uh, you know just. Do they have athletics? And they did. Student, a, they had student a, clubs. Exactly, athletics and students cl student clubs. I was fortunate enough that I had um, a high school counselor and a history teacher that really helped me out through school. And they helped me with mentoring and everything. But what was more important, they they encouraged me to go participate in pre-college programs. So that's how I was able to go to Arizona State University, Northern Arizona University, New University of Mexico, all these different colleges. And that's where I had a chance to, um, you know, learn about going to college, being on a college campus Good. at an early age. So I started going to pre-college programs. I want to say when I was about tenth grade. So every summer I was gone, and that kind of got me acclimated to the college environment, and that made me a little bit more comfortable when I decided to go to college. Sounds good. Well, did your is your sister younger than you? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So tell us about what where you went to college and mm -hmm. 
uh, how campus life and college? Mm -hmm. um, I went to, I got, got my undergrad from New Mexico State University in Las Cruces, and that is about six hours from um, our home. From, from home for me and it was it was a difficult experience but again because it was my first time being away from home for such a long distance I and then also the, the hardest part was uh, um, meeting new people you know there in my little community I was the majority coming to college environment I was a minority and um, we, you know, we had a small group of people that we were, that we from our community that that, that kind of stuck together. But luckily, so there were some people from your from your town. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right? okay. And so um, they also, what was very beneficial, the university had a Native American Indian program, and so that's where I, similar to what we have here at, at sure. Purdue, and similar to, to what I do with my job here, I got to work with the people there, and they really made the the transition from you know, high school environment to college environment. They help with that transition, and it also helped at times when um, you were feeling lonely and didn't know you anybody. You needed someone's help. Exactly. Somebody to go to place to. Right? Exactly. And also given that um, when I, coming from a reservation school, I wasn't academically prepared as the other students were, so therefore I had a little bit more catching up to do. And then um, they offered tutoring services and um, additional resources that I was able to use. Good. So that's where I went to uh, my, my undergrad and... Um, and you lived right on campus. I lived on campus, lived in the dorms, and first experience living with non-natives. Of course, everybody has their horror stories, undergraduate stories, so I can top everybody with all those undergrad stories. <laughs> but then again, um, I had an opportunity to meet some wonderful girls that are now lifelong friends. Sure, So, sure. you know, one it, of my... It, it all blends out and works out. It know? does. You just yeah. have to find the right mix of people. Yeah. That what about clubs or any particular clubs that you joined when you were there? Um, I work closely with the um, American Indian Science and Engineering Society. It's called ACES, A-I-S-E-S. -E right. And so that's where um, I really got involved with, the, with that organization. And then I worked with some of the American Indian clubs there at the on campus. What was your major? I started off in engineering, but I didn't really seem to catch on very well. <laughs> well, I, that's I think a challenge. It is, but I think for me, I, I, I'm more of a social person, and um, I just didn't see it as my fit. I ended up um, graduating in business with a marketing degree, so okay. really, you know, getting out, and meeting people, and that's where I really found my my passion. That was good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then what came next after, uh, did you go to graduate school? What came after graduation? Um, after graduation, I ended up, at my I got married. My husband and I met there at Las Cruces, and then we um, got married, and he was working for White Sands Missile Range down in Indiana, uh, not, down in uh, La Las Cruces. And so I, shortly after that, started working in Albuquerque. I worked in um, with the New Mexico Commission on Higher Education, and they had a program there promoting, so I was basically promoting education throughout the state, working uh, with programs specifically designed for middle school students and returning adult students. So I would travel and meet with libraries and meet with um, um, school. I did a lot of county fairs as well, but we had a display and materials and promotional items that we would give out. So it really was a supplemental program to encourage students to go to college. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And that got you out and got around and utilized exactly. your background and training. Wonderful. It, it, it was. And what was also very beneficial for me. There was parts of the states of, of New Mexico I'd never visited before, so. <laughs> it's a learning experience, right? It is, <laughs> correct. And so I worked there for a while, and then after that I started working as a school teacher with Albuquerque Public Schools, and I worked with the Indian Education Department. So basically with that job, I was, you know, helping students transition. Uh, it was a transition program to help students who were living on the reservation and helping them with that adjustment from reservation to the urban environment. With Albuquerque is the biggest pop, the metropolitan area in, in the entire state of New Mexico, so therefore a lot of um, different people from across the state will come to Albuquerque seeking employment. And we have we would have a number of native people that would come off the reservation and they would bring their whole families, find work, and then the kids were the ones, they had been you know, going to school in reservation schools and then having to going. come in and transition to a huge school system. It was it was a daunting task for them. So therefore, that's where I would come and help with the students and help them with that transition. And then I taught, um, I, I think I, t I can't remember how far I taught. I'm trying to think. I taught the little ones for a while, but then I noticed that um, a lot of the students were not 
academically, not academically, they weren't preparing for college in the native students there. And um, after talking with the um, people with Indian Education Department, I then transitioned to become sort of the career advisor there. So I really worked with native students, getting them to visit college campuses, and we held college fairs. So really was introducing them to um, to colleges. A lot of the recruiting and things that they do here, they go to the high schools, and this, you would be dealing with the high schools. Level exactly. Right. So I was working with the high school students and helping them uh, conduct workshops on how to f seek financial aid and bringing in tribal organizations, talking about how they can help fund schools, um, fund the students. So basically it was a way to kind of like a career college counselor to helping the students getting right. into college. What were some of their res their hesitancy about uh, going to college? Is it uh, they didn't think that they could cut it or is there different variables? On the, there's a variety of factors. Okay. The biggest one was just lack of information. Yeah. They've always the, the native students that I work with always saw it as an unattainable goal. They, you know, thought, well, they're they're they've lived on the reservation, and this is it, and there's and no they're going to re be returning to the reservation once they graduate. So, yeah. um, at that point, it was just a matter of letting them explore college. And again, you know, with with kids nowadays too, they're scared to leave home. Right. <laughs> it's I always know. hard to take right. that first step. So and finances is another big thing, not only for. For the student as well as the family mm -hmm. and at all at many le mid levels right? exactly yeah. with a lot of the, the the native students the finance wasn't that big issue because each had but at that time there were tribal tribes had funding to support students to go on to school and um, and so therefore that was one thing that they didn't really have to worry about but I okay. think for them it was just a matter of um, not knowing where to go, what, what information to to go to. So even though um, they're in Albuquerque, the University of New Mexico is right in their backyard, that was the place that they would go and they would, sure. you know, just getting them to a college campus. Many of them had, even though they lived in the city for a number of years, they'd never even visit the college right. campus. So that's kind of where I would help out in that area. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very, very rewarding too. You know, yep, exactly. Elementary. Great. So that was kind of, I ended my career there at in Albuquerque and then um, my husband and I, my husband's an engineer and he um, got a job and they ended up transferring him out here to Indiana so that's kind of how I found my way out here to Indiana okay mm -hmm. and uh, you have children yes okay. I have two daughters my oldest is actually a sophomore here at Purdue and she's majoring in engineering my youngest is um, 11 years old she just had a birthday so I have to think about it. I always said she's 10 so you know when you do that transition uh, she's now 11 years old and she is in sixth grade oh very good mm -hmm. so uh, you talk about the career path and then your initial appointment was the program coordinator mm -hmm. and multiple uh, multi and that, talk a little about that and then the Native American Educational Center. Okay. okay. Uh, yes, I worked in, um, I, I was, we've been here in Indiana for, for almost 15 years now and okay. um, for the first 10 years I worked in Indianapolis with uh, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, IUPUI. So there I had worked as a middle, I directed a middle school program, I um, worked in the enrollment services office, and I also was the assistant director for admissions. So I had a variety of jobs there. It's more so targeted to um, um, en enrollment services, getting people to go to college sure. and so forth. Um, I came here in 2007 and worked with the College of Agriculture in the um, the Office of Multicultural Programs. So my job was working specifically, excuse me, with the academic department to help to inc to encourage underrepresented populations to to seek careers in agriculture. And I traveled, um, it was both graduate and undergraduate, so the fall semester I would focus my recruitment efforts on going to graduate events. So I was traveling to um, historically black colleges, universities, attending all these different institutions to recruit students to come to Purdue. Very good. Mm -hmm. A little bit uh, sort of brought back what you've been also doing at the high school level exactly so it really brought it to the fruition all the yeah. experience you had it yeah it really does see you know see full circle you know because i kind of feel like i've worked on all right. all spectrums and even as a parent you know when when my daughter was seeking to go to college i found myself on the consumer end trying to figure out okay how are they going to sell this program to me so we did a lot of traveling to different colleges and universities before she decided to come here to purdue oh that's good mm -hmm. let's talk first of all a little bit about the center it was established in 2007 correct and then uh -huh. This grant, the Alfred P. Sloan and um, Sally Mason with the Mosaic was somewhat involved, and also talk a little that to Tecumseh project. Okay, too. good. Yeah. Well, it, it really was um, all of this, all these efforts 
were in place even before I got here. Okay. So I, I can't really take credit for stuff that I was already sure. put but in place. But it takes a lot of planning. Oh, yes, them. exactly. Yeah. And I really do give a lot of a lot of um, credit to the students who were here. We had a group of students here, Native students, that um, they, they put together a proposal. They submitted it to the provost's office. And at that time, Sally Mason was the provost. And she... Um, you know, she was supportive of their efforts. They put a very thoughtful proposal talking about the mission of, of the center, what the goals were, and as a result, um, that's how the, the center came, came, to, come, came into existence. Okay. And a lot of it came on the heels of the Tecumseh program. Tecumseh program, which, or Tecumseh project, I'm not sure how, um, but I, th I think it's Tecumseh project. I always get them both mixed up, but basically it was a group of students, group of students, faculty, staff here on, here at Purdue who were looking to develop a Native American community, and so they, one of the, the, the outgrowths of that was the, 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 um, the, the establishment of the NACC, and the other one was putting together a proposal to submit to the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. And so they kind of all, you know, they all dovetail together and they, they work, they worked, um, they were, they're interrelated. And with the Alfred P. Sloan, it is a program, um, the funding to support Native students pursuing a master's or PhD here at Purdue. And the, what's, there, there are seven different um, Sloan programs across the country. Purdue is the only one east of the Mississippi that has this, but it does have a unique uh, approach because there, this, the the Purdue program here, we really encourage the Native students who are to focus their thesis or their dissertation on their home, um, so a project on their homeland. So, for instance, we have a student here from Eastern Band Cherokee who's studying about about plants. So, therefore, he you know he does he's doing his research in the Smoky Mountains. We have another. Um, female here who is, I think she's in wildlife science, I know it's in forestry natural resources, but basically she, she's from the Ojibwa Nation, and with the Ojibwa Nation, there are seven different clan animals that are um, important to their particular tribe, and through research working there, she's noticed that one particular animal has been dying out, they don't know what's happening, it's disappearing, and so her master's thesis is finding out what you know what's going on with the pine martins or trying to figure out why they're disappearing so for her it's important because she's been in that area she knows sure. she's no, knows the animal but more so for her own um tribal significance it's one of the clan animals they want to find a way to sustain that animal yeah, very mm -hmm. good that's nice and then uh, the first director was Veronica Hurst, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. She was here, and she, um, she again, did a lot. I always give her a lot of credit because of what she did to get the, 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 the getting the foundation of the center started. And um, so it really was easy to have to come into a position where you had the Tecumseh program with the, the students, the faculty, and staff that were very involved, and then with Veronica helping to lay the foundation. So that made it a lot easier when I came to this right. position. Is the, uh, is, it still, is the Sloan Foundation still supporting it? Correct. Okay. Well, no, that okay. we they've the funding now it's all been switched over to help with the student support. Okay. There was there was some there was some initial funding just to help start the center, but That's a thing. but then now that this is the center's up and going, they've switched all the funding now, and that is going to be focused specifically on the student support. Yeah. Okay, alrighty. And then the dedication. Correct. October, yeah. That was October sixth. Um, sixth. Yes. Right. Okay. And there's and a wonderful picture of uh, oh, the yes. president there. Yes, we we were very fortunate to have um, Dr. Cordova come and attend the the uh, dedication, and it really again was just showing the efforts that have taken place here on campus. Um, and for us, it really was a major accomplishment to be actually be recognized. <laughs> Visibility is the biggest challenge we have here on campus. And so as an outgrowth, um, having the dedication here and having the administration support and everything, that that's yeah. really shows their commitment. Sure. Now, you're the new director. What are some of the challenges and initiatives and things? Mm -hmm. And also tell about the programs. And one thing I was going to ask, they had housing and food services had a... Uh, over in winter had the Native American Cultural Night, I guess, and so that mm -hmm. was kind of interesting. Yeah, we have, we, now I've been, I've just finished my first full year as of July, and um, this has been the first, the first year we've really had a lot of programs across the, um, across campus, and what we are, what, my goal is really to help increase the visibility of the NACC here on campus, and also to help educate non-natives about natives and that seems to be the biggest the biggest hurdle sure. we're facing um, as far as um, 
we, you know, programming, we did a cultural program. We had some wonderful partnerships last year. We had the Eastern Man Cherokee Partnership where we uh, worked with the Cherokee Preservation Foundation from North Carolina. And with that project, we had um, at least one a tribal member, tribal elder here on campus for an entire week every month, starting in September all the way through April. And um, we had a number of programs that, that they were housed here, but they were guest lectures and classes. They um, did some presentations within the community talking. I, I know they did one at the library and they worked with some of the local elementary mm -hmm. schools and um, we were able to serve lunch so the students had some real personal one-on-one -on -one time with them but we had an ethnobotanist here we had a cultural historian we had a linguist here um, we had a basket weaver so really it was a variety of different cultures or different backgrounds of people and coming to share their their expertise on their area right. how many st are there many uh, students Native American student um, that live in Indiana are there many the, living here in Indiana there is a small population okay. um, you what know, about in saying then expanding on that in the Midwest mm -hmm. area? Is there more in the? Is there quite a few in the neighboring states? Not the the neighboring state who, that has the highest native population would be up in Michigan and Wisconsin, and okay. mainly because those particular states have tribes that are federally recognized in those states. Okay. Here in Indiana, there are no tribes that are rec federally recognized. There are six. There's actually six different tribal nations that are. That were that originated from here, um, basically, you know, stating that these six tribes were here before Indiana became a state, okay. and uh, none of them have state recognition. Only one, I'm sorry, none of them have federal recognition. Only the Pokake and Potawatomi they're recognized federally in the state of Michigan. Oh, okay. so Thank that's you. why you have that. You know, you have that sure. those high populations yeah. up in there. Um, any special events? You just talked about mm -hmm. those. What the students? Uh, they've been involved in leadership. You have a, do you have a, a student board that sort of helps? We have one, one of our um, most active organizations here, here is the American Indian Science and Engineering Society, ACES, and we do have a very strong leadership program here. The students, um, it's composed of students who are majoring in the science, technology, engineering, or math, but we do also have some non-science majors in, in the program, and they're, um, they, they Reestablished a chapter last September, so we've had a first full year. But what was their crowning achievement last or this past March 2010? They hosted a regional conference here on campus, and um, the ACES ACES is part of a national organization. So. <clears throat> Here at Purdue, we have our Purdue student chapter, and um, Purdue was selected to host the regional conference. We started off with just hoping to get maybe 30 people, just a number of people, just a small group. We ended up with over 100, so it really was a big, a big accomplishment. We got a lot of support from the College of Engineering and from the provost's office, so it really was a big achievement. And um, again, it helped with visibility, bringing um, to light native the native community here at Purdue. So now it really the the Purdue ACES chapter is really gaining national recognition across Super. with the organization. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Native American Heritage Month in November. Mm -hmm. Talk a little about that. With and what, um, and what your planning is going to be this coming, this okay, year, and what you've done. Well, you did something last year. Obviously. Last year we had a full range of programs, right. and we uh, we were able to feature one of our. Um, we had our Ch Cherokee um, elder who was here on campus, but we also work closely. Another partnership program that we have is with the Idle Drug Museum, located in Indianapolis. I was going to ask you about yeah, that. We yeah, we have a really good partnership with them, and basically we are able to. Um, host their idol, the Idol Jorgs visiting artists and residents um, here on campus. Uh, for certain times of the month, they'll have an artist there who will do a month-long presentation, and they're able to let us bring this, the guest up here to do a, a presentation. And you're having some, someone coming in September, Richard Goodrich. Yes, exactly. Right? Yes. Oh, there's our new one there. I'll show, oh, okay. show that one with you. Sure. Um, but we, have, we do have Richard coming as part of our... Uh, uh, as part of our um, our artists in resident program and he will be here on September 28th and he is from the Maricopa Nation um, his focus is I, I put cultural cultural restoration but um, his whole um, expertise area is helping to regain a lot of the loss you know um, how do I say it um, He's restoring the culture and heritage of the Maricopa people, but he's doing that by 
rebuilding some of the tools that they used to use way back, you know, back in back in the traditional ways. In other words, they're, they're grinding corn traditionally. They're making um, tools, everyday tools, and they're really helping to bring back some of the, the, the language and some of the dances and stuff like that. So that's his focus. Very, that's mm-hmm. right. And um, uh, you probably visit the museum. Do the students go down there too? Is that part of it? Or we have, yeah, we, we're, um, we're expanding our partnership to also working with the Black Cultural Center. Okay. So in the, in April, I'm sorry, in February of two, 2011, the um, NACC and the BCC are going to be collaborating on a project that will feature both both cultural centers and we'll be working closely with the Idle Drug Museum. Right now, um, th- there's a pro there's a this there's a there's there's going to be a new exhibit at the Idle Drug called Red and Black and it's focus with I just had the paperwork here because I just signed everything. But red and black and it's focused on I'm sorry, I don't mean to be shuffling papers around here. Oh, here it is. The exhibit is called Red and Black Related Through History, and it's going to be opening at the Idol Drug on February 12, 2011. So basically, we'll be also hosting uh, some type of event here on campus and possibly taking a group of students, community members, faculty, staff down to the Idol Drug oh, for this. Mm-hmm. Right. What about the liaison with the regional campuses? Are there, the center, do you have any... Contacts or keep in touch with the regional campuses. We we, we do um, okay. with there, with the center. There's only the one. There was here. only uh, here in the state of Indiana. I think there's only two cultural centers, and um, luckily Purdue is the first one to host the to have a, the, the Native American Cultural Center. IU has the First Nations um, Education Cultural Center as well, oh, okay. and um, down in Bloomington. In Bloomington, yes, we. Uh, you know, we, we are all, I know all the people that work at all the other universities, and we have a very professional working relationship. And we're, we, in the past, we've been able to collaborate and um, to bring together our resources. For instance, we had a speaker we wanted to bring in, and Dr. Wesley Thomas was our speaker, and he did a presentation here at Purdue. He did a presentation at IUPUI. He did a presentation at IU. He did, I think, Notre Dame, Ball State. So basically, we were able to pull, pull our resources so that way we could bring him out for a whole week, and then we were all able to, to share in the presentation. Sure. And we're hoping to do that same collaboration in the future. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, the seminar series, you have that too, don't you? you have the the sem- seminar series, okay. we're changing the focus of the seminar series, and um, we're, we're really just kind of restructuring our, our all our cultural programs. And this coming year, we have one theme that we're, we're – Putting everything under is called respecting Mother Earth, and it's going to be the theme for all our programs for the fall and spring semester. And with under this whole respecting Mother Earth theme, we're going to focus on four different core areas. And the first one uh, is going to be focused on Native American identity, and that's where we're, we have at least three programs this coming month. And it's focus actually September and October focus on Native American identity. Um, we're going to have a lecturer, actually two lecturers, come in talking about the politics of Native American identity. And then we're going to have a workshop on uh, tracing your Native American lineage. And the last item we're going to have is um, a film discussion group examining Native American identity through films. So really, and that's going to be interesting because it's going to be led by the Native students here on campus. Yeah. They were the ones who picked the, p- picked the movies, and so they're all going to have a chance to... Um, you know, give their feedback on some of these movies. Peter Pan, for instance, you know, have break them up, have, show the movie, Brooke, and then have s- some groups just talk about what were some themes identified, and then I'll actually have it as an educational process for oh, the students. Oh, that sounds very good. Uh, you know, you're the advisor to the American Indian Science and Engineering Society. Mm-hmm. That's a Purdue chapter. And then uh, there's also the Minorities in Agriculture mm-hmm. and National Science, and uh, you're the advisor for that. I'm still the advisor. I was yeah. trying to get out of it, but they won't let me go. It's basically uh, with the... With <laughs> <laughs> with the College of Ag. It's Ag's. very hard. I, others have experienced it. You get on this, and no matter, you know, you, the, you reach a point where somebody else could do it. Or, uh-huh. But it's really hard to get out. From it one. is, it Even is. Even if you say, I'll do it adjunctly. <laughs> exactly. So you, that, I'm glad I'm not the only one who feels that pressure. <laughs> and that is still my connection to the College of Ag. And uh, Manners is a group. Th- they were the first group I advised when I got here to, to campus. And so I still have that, that deep connection with them. And we actually have um, our, our student employee here. Her name is Liz Hansen. She is from the Ojibwe Nation, and she's actually the president of Manners. So, uh, you know, being an employee here, she's going to be working closely with Manners, and we'll support her. But it's um, it really is a, a, a unique organization. Exactly. 
mm -hmm. finger in there. That's true. How about any awards or honors? Anything special that you um, seen? Not in the last year. I was honored as one of the women of Purdue with the mortar board, and so that was something I had received. But um, that did that come as a surprise, or how did you hear about? Sometimes I ask people that, and they say, "Well, one story that I share with you. I was interviewing somebody, and there was some sort of a banquet, mm -hmm. and this person was invited, and went, and while they were having dinner, noticed that there were other people mm -hmm. that normally don't come to this particular uh -huh. event, mm -hmm. and they were there because the person was getting an award, <laughs> oh, which they learned about afterwards. Uh -huh. so it was like a really surprise for her. Well, yes, I, no, I was notified ahead of time, and I don't know how I was nominated. I guess um, That's very nice. But it was good to know it, that um, I, I shared the stage with uh, some very strong women across campus, and, and that was more so geared towards new people who were new to administrative roles or people who are new faculty on campus. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And then now, you, you are, you, are you still on the board of directors of the American Indian Center of Indiana? I, sir, I, I reduced my duties, so I am just now on the advisory, one of the advisory members, uh, okay. given that my duties here at Purdue increased. That in, uh, I what so, Tell us a little about that particular mm -hmm. association. Um, the American Indian Center of Indiana is probably... Is it located? It's located in Indianapolis. Okay. And so it, it is the only organization that I know of that focuses on Native American issues here in the state. And they help with um, stu people who are seeking employment and they do, they do have federal funding to help with um, helping to get people employed. And they also have um, educational components, so they're able to help support students go to college. And then they have a cultural component as well, where, you know, if, if a, sp a speaker's bureau, so if somebody wants a presentation mm -hmm. or something of that nature, that's where we kind of fill in. Yeah, that's a good start. Mm -hmm. And you're on the American Indian Theater Company? Yes, Indiana? American Indian Theater, Theater Company. It's still going strong. And, um, Is that also in Indiana? It's in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just had a performance. I want to say last fall was their last performance. So they're looking to do. They're looking for a new play, and they'll be doing a new performance here. But it really is a, a group of Native students who are wanting to um, provide some type of theatrical performance that'll show a positive image of Native Americans. Yeah, that's, and then how about the Indianapolis Native American Heritage Day Committee? Are you still on that? Yeah, we just actually we just had the event this past weekend. Okay. So that was August 28th and 29th. Yep. It seems so long ago, but it was just this past this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> and that was a crowning achievement because we worked closely with the mayor's office. And to have the support of the Indianapolis mayor to, um, you know, support Native American, um, a Native American program, it really is big here in Indiana. It w w there was a big powwow that was, a, that was, a, that was um, featured it with the program. And... Um, some of the colleges and universities across the state came together. We had a little, a little college fair, and then we did some workshops. So I did a workshop focused on how to help Native Americans finance their education. And there was another workshop on how to help um, students uh, navigate through college. So that's where the, all the colleges and universities do take a big role in helping to provide information or, or serve as a resource to this event. Right. Is it, was it just a one day or is it It a was a two-day. This, was, this two was the first year. It was a two-day event, and it took place in Indianapolis at Garfield Park. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. And how about the Indiana Multi-Ethnic Committee? Are you still mm -hmm. on that? Unfortunately, I had to bow out of that sure. one. It was in Indianapolis. A lot of my duties are in Indianapolis, so therefore it was harder for me to be going. And uh, I am actually live on the suburb of Indianapolis, so I do commute from Indianapolis to here, and so sometimes I can, you know, go down to um, to Indy for meetings, and I'm still closely connected with the Idle Drug Museum through a number of different um, programs, task force, and if they need somebody to, to do some events, um, they either call on me or my, or my family, so we do a lot of events with them. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, how about any hobbies or special interests? Special interests. Or um, hobbies or what? Uh, we I do a lot of gardening. My youngest and I really picked up a, uh, the vegetables or flowers or flowers. Mm -hmm. okay. we, we do flower. We're, we've been trying to do a vegetable garden, but um, given okay. our we, scheduling, our whatever. schedule and our busy summer, we we thought this was going to be the way we have a vegetable garden, but we weren't home most of the time. And so I do a lot of um, gardening, um, reading of books, but I ha I can't really read books as much as I used to because of my commute. I now do a lot of audio books, <laughs> so that's right. been my saving grace is just going to the library, checking out some audio books, and then driving. and And I like it because it makes um, my trip go a lot faster. So. Um, 
you know, I look forward to driving home. And secondly, it's helping me to drive slower because I want to listen to the book a little bit longer. <laughs> That's okay. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Do you have an outstanding event in your life? An outstanding event? Um, I think it, it for, for, I will have one. I had one and I will have another one coming up soon, but it's okay. basically centered on my, my children. I have two daughters and for Navajo women, we always have a coming of age ceremony. And so I had we had one for my for my oldest daughter, and that what really what age is that? Usually? Um, ten, eleven. Okay. Yeah. So okay. we had my oldest is coming of age ceremony. So it really was, um, it really was a big family um, family event, but it it wasn't it, it, even though it was centered upon her, but for for me and my my family, it was pretty much a gift for us to give to her, and it's a whole you know week long process that we have to prepare for, and. Um, it really is designed to make sure that she will continue to go. Co it, it's centered around her. That the, and we have a number of family who come out, and we have some people who come out and sing for her and do a number of things. But it, it is to to wish her that she will have a long, prosperous life, that she'll be successful in her life. And so that's kind of what we did for my older one, and we'll be preparing for my younger one. Oh, that sounds very good. Um, and so, anything special in closing, or something I forgot to ask that you would like to share with us? Looking ahead to this year. Looking ahead to this year, right. the challenges is just trying to increase our visibility of the Native American Educational Co Cultural Center here on campus. We got quite a few things going. We on do here, have, and right. I think it, it's it's really we're, we are building momentum, and that's what we really want to do is to let people know that we have a vibrant Native community here in Indiana, and really to highlight some of our students that are here. We have some phenomenal students coming from all over the place that are willing to share what they want to learn. And for me, it, it always is educational process and talking about myself, talking about where I came from, my background, and I do share a lot so that hopefully that will help, um, help other people realize that to have a more positive image of Native Americans. You might make a comment about the, the trip for the summer because, mm -hmm. uh, partly because you ran into some students who are here, here and are now mm -hmm. working out. You exactly. Yes, we had... Um, so follow-up is sort of good. Yeah, okay, good. Well, with, with the summer, we travel throughout the state of New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah, and Nevada, and we were part of a geology field course, and it was focused on issues that are affecting, geological issues that are affecting Native communities. And we had a chance to visit the Acoma Pueblo, the Navajo Nation, the Paiute Reservation, the Hopi Pueblo, um, and I'm forgetting one of them. There was, so basically, you know, we went through all these different communities. We went to Black Mesa coal mine, and this is where they're extracting coal from Black Mesa on the Navajo Reservation and how they're shipping it across the country to help support um, cities off the reservation. And for the many of the students, it really brought to light a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, concerns that are taking place across Indian country, how resources, natural resources are being depleted and how um, there really isn't a voice with the, the, the the, there's really no voice to to talk about that. So the hope is that the students that went on this trip will understand the impact, and then that'll get them to get more involved with their tribal okay. communities. Mm -hmm. so they're more aware of it. Exactly. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Anything uh, in closing that uh, I think we've covered just about everything? No, I think we covered everything. And the, the w one, I mean, final yeah. message just to let student people know that the NACC is here. It's welcome to open to the entire campus, and we have events that are here. We would love to more to have more people come and learn more about um, what we're doing here. Good. Felika, thank you very mm -hmm. much for this. I really appreciate this.